Hello everyone, uh, this is Ori Bloop. Welcome back to another Game Builder Garage tutorial. Um, today we have a basic color changer uh, using the D-pad. So you can either select the left D-pad or the right D-pad and it will change the color of this red spinning box. So let's go ahead and press the right D-pad. And there we go, it switches to green. And then if we press it again, blue, again, yellow, and then it should go back to red. Just like that and of course if you go and use the left d-pad it will actually go back to the previous color so yellow blue green and then back to red so you can um, select any type of color and um, yeah that's pretty much everything you can do so let's go ahead and just get right into this tutorial so uh the first thing that you're going to want to do uh in the edit mode is go to objects simple objects and grab a simple box um, of course, you guys could make it spinning if you want to. Um, the way I did it is go to objects and go to um, special objects and then grab a rotating object and then you can make the box spin. But um, the, of course, that was just for the uh, demo in the beginning. But um, what I'm going to do is just take a box um, for this box. I'm going to go ahead and go into the settings. Um, I'm going to turn off uh, movable, destructive, destructible. And um, for this case, since we already have um, our uh, textures, I'm gonna turn off visible and I'm just gonna keep it solid. So we have our box right here. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is grab my textures. So uh, the textures I have over here um, are really, you know, they're just basic colors. So if you could just go inside, um, it's just a red color. And for the texture face, I did it to all the sides on the um, the block. Of course, depending on what textures that you're switching to, uh, you guys could have different colors or, or different textures. Uh, but all we're going to do is connect it to our box object. And you just connect all these textures. Um, so right now, uh, I think none of them will show up just because all of them are connected and there's no um, order to it. Um, so we're going to actually go ahead and add the order to it. So... Um, for our left D-pad and right D-pad buttons, we're going to go ahead and grab those. So just grab, go to input, button press, and since it's not on here, just go, go ahead and grab a random one and then go into the settings and uh, make it a uh, the right D-pad. And then I'm just going to go ahead and make a left one too. So now we have a right D-pad and a left D-pad. I'm just going to go and scale those down. So um, I'm going to be using a method that I know actually a lot of people really don't like for some reason. Um, it's basically the counter method and it uh, compares with different input, I mean different constants. Um, I know there's probably a way to do it with um, the, what's it called, the uh, marker displays, but um, I like this method just because you can add um, a lot very quickly and um, it's it's efficient and it works perfectly fine, but um, I might show a tutorial on how to do it a different way. Um, but if you guys aren't familiar with this, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and explain it. So um, grab a constant, and since we have four different types of colors here, um, I'm gonna make four different types of constants. So um, actually I'm just gonna copy just like those. And basically to number them in this game, um, or to assign a value to them, uh, we're going to change these constants. So we have uh, one, and I'm going to put this at two, and I'm going to make this one a three, and then I'm going to make this last uh, constant a four. So basically, this is just assigning constants to our textures. And if we go to middle, we're going to actually go to comparison and grab um, our equal sign, and we're going to just... Um, make four of these just like that and we can put them directly next to our constants and now we're just going to need a counter so for middle uh go to flag counter random and grab a counter so for our counter uh go into settings and this is going to be a loop so basically once we reach our max which is four in this case it's going to go back to zero so that's why we do loop and since we don't have a zero as a uh, identifier for texture, we're going to move it to one and we're going to set this at five. And the reason why we do five is since it doesn't count five and it goes back to one, 
um, yeah, that's that's basically exactly why we do it. We just set it at five, so it counts one, two, three, four, and then goes back to one. And then make sure you guys change on change from zero, so then um, it only changes when we directly press um, a button. So now uh, for count up, we're gonna move our uh, for the right direction. So if we press the right D-pad, it will change this value. So I'm gonna press it right now. It goes to two, three, four, and then it should go back to one like that. And we're gonna connect our um, left um, D-pad to the countdown. So basically, since it's in a loop, if we move uh, to the left D-pad, it will count back to four. So four, three, two, one. And then if we go right, one, two, three, four. Um, and that's basically the entirety of, um, of how this system works. And basically it's comparing with our constants. So let me go ahead and move our comparison a little bit. So for our output, we're just gonna go ahead and connect the count um, to each of these on input one. So what I'm doing here is just attaching these all to the comparisons like that. And then all you have to do is move the constants over to input two, just like this. So it's individual to each one. And what this is basically doing is um, when it counts either from the counter, uh, we're basically selecting one of these and it's uh, letting off an output from our uh, comparisons. So now we can just go ahead and directly connect it to the visible. So um, go ahead and connect it just like that. Nope. Go ahead and connect it right there and there we go so basically uh when we change the counter so if we press right d-pad it will go to two and our comparison will um identify two is is equal to each other so basically it will sh uh, output the green and if we change it to three it will output to blue and then four it will output to yellow um, and that's exactly what we want so if we go ahead and look in the game you guys can see that we start off with red, and then if we press uh, right on the D-pad, it will change to green, blue, yellow, and then back to red. And of course, it goes um, the opposite way too, because it's in that loop. And that's pretty much it for uh, the color switching mechanic, I guess. Um, and if you guys wanted to add some sort of UI to it, uh, I have this little thing, these little arrows. So you can um, know that you have to go uh, left and right to change the uh, color. But I think that's pretty much it for this tutorial. It's pretty short. Um, uh, final last statements is um, I think this would be really useful for like uh, like maybe a custom character selection. So basically, if you had different faces for these, um, it would change to different faces. Um, and like depending on what face you like. Uh, then you'd be able to select somehow. Um, I'm actually uh, coming up with a system to make a custom character select. So I know a few of you have been um, asking for that. But I, I think that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, thank you all for watching and uh, have a great day.